Hello friends, look on this side. Today I'm going to discuss top 100 most frequently asked Salesforce indication question and answers. And these questions are based on my and my friend's interview experience because I have 10 years experience and I have I know many people who are in this Salesforce industry and they're giving the Salesforce interview like from years and years. So I collected all of these questions and whenever you give Salesforce interview, uh, interview will definitely expect that you should know something related to the integration, uh, Salesforce integration. So I'm going to help you out how you can give the answer of Salesforce integration. And if you will just cover these hundred questions, then you will, you will be able to crack the interview related to the Salesforce integration. So there is one catch in this video. I will only discuss 20 uh, questions and I will tell you how you can get the hundred questions. So let's begin. Uh, so first question is how many callouts you can do in the Salesforce uh, single transaction when we are making a call out. So Salesforce is a multi-tenancy system, okay? And when you do call out with a third party system, then Salesforce only give us 100 call out of limits in single transaction. So in single transaction, let's suppose that there's a trigger or something like that. There is a, what I can say, uh, if you're submitting an application and at that time, if you're at a single transaction, there are 100 users who are submitting that application. And after submitting the application, there are 100 call out is happening in single transaction then that is your last limit if it's more than 100 it will fail and what error will you will get you will get too many call outs 101 so you have to be understand that there's a limit of call out is 100 call out in single transaction the second question is how to resolve too many call outs 101 issue so let's suppose that you cannot reduce your call out limit right you have to do more than 100 call outs in single transaction then how you can fix that issue so, so the answer, simple answer is asynchronous transaction. We can use queuable transaction and we have to segregate the callouts. Like in one queue, we can do 10 callouts. In second queue, we can do 10 callouts. Or you, you can try to use batch class as, as well, but queuable will help you out to resolve this issue. Batch is not recommendable. Second thing is what is the name credential and why to use name credentials. So in one of my video, if I'll show you. Uh, so recently I have published one video on YouTube this video which is about the Salesforce integration name credentials so if you have not watched that video go back and watch this video where I have discussed why to use name credential uh, so name credentials basically we use uh, to use authentication process okay it also help not to hardcore your endpoint so whenever we make outbound call out it's required to give the information of the endpoint. So you can store that endpoint with, within name credential and you have to just give the reference of your name credential. So it will help you out to not to expose your endpoint in your code. And you, you can choose authentication process. You can store all the secrets there in the name credential so that it cannot be stored in, in, inside the code. And if you have to rotate your credentials after a year or something, you don't have to change the code. You have to go to your name credentials. So go and watch my video and then you will get to know or when why we have to use the name credentials that video is really good now i'm moving forward what is the oath authentication flow in salesforce this this part i have already discussed in my last video oath is basically open protocol authorization process which shares the data between the application and third party system in the exchange of token so i'm going to discuss that again what is oath authentication well, this is really very important questions most of most of the integration we do to the oath authentication process so if I go here, so this is authentication uh, OAuth 2.0 workflow. So let's suppose that your system is Salesforce is a banking application and Salesforce is sending a request to the OAuth authentication process. And this is the bank API. Okay, bank application will send the request with uh, consumer key and consumer secrets. Once you will provide that, OAuth server will authorize that. Okay, this is the Gagan Salesforce application. So give him the access token. Then they will give us the access token. Again, I, I have to send a request to the resource server and then resource server will get the access token and then he will provide you the data. Then the exchange of access token, you will get the data on OAuth 2. So we have completed the four questions. Let's move forward. Have you ever come across the issue uncommitted work pending? Okay, so this error usually come when you make, when you try to do that DML operation and integration requests in the same transition. Let's suppose that there is an Apex class and Initially, when someone is like user is doing some action on a record, let's suppose that if uh, if a agent is closing the case, you are firing that Apex class, and that class is in, in the starting. They are updating the case in, in in that class, and then you are doing the callout. If in a, in a single transaction you are doing DML plus callout, then you will get this uncommitted work pending. So it's recommended don't do DML and callout in the same transaction. It should be in a separate uh, transaction. So say in order to fix this issue, you can use future method. Like you have to just separate your, you know, call out transaction instead of in a single transaction making DML and call out. 
ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स वट इज अल्फ साइंस सी एस सेल्फ साइंस सर्टिफिकेट एंड सी एस सी एस साइंस सर्टिफिकेट सो दिस इज अगेन लाइक वी यूज फॉर दथोराइजेशन पर्पज सेल्फ साइंस सर्टिफिकेट एंड सी एस आई सर्टिफिकेट तो सेल्फ साइन इज नथिंग बट सेल्स ऑफ इट सेल्फ सिक्योर एंड बेसिकली ऑथोराइज इज सर्टिफिकेट एंड फॉर द सी एस सर्टिफिकेशन दिज अ थर्ड पार्टी सर्टिफिकेशन अथॉरिटी दट सर्टिफाइड दैट सो सी एस साइंस सर्टिफिकेट इज मोर यू नो सिक्योर एंड सेल्फ साइन इज नॉट सिक्योर Now, next question. What is the JWT authentication in Salesforce? So, JWT is a JWT-based access token is formatted as a J, JSON object that contains all the information required to authorize an app. So, JWT token is a kind of token. Okay, I, I can't say this authorize. This is a token we can use in OAuth too as well, and it generate the token in format of JSON, and it contains all the necessary information which is required to authorize a particular application. Next question. A third-party system wants to send a request to Salesforce. How to let other systems send the request to Salesforce, and how to authorize that system? So it's saying that there's a third-party system now. They want to send the request to Salesforce. Not Salesforce is not sending any request. It's inbound integration. And how you can achieve that? Simple answer is that connected app. If you are doing inbound integration in Salesforce, then you have to create uh, in a connected app which provides the uh, credentials, consumer key, consumer secret. You have to give that that credentials to the third-party system. They will hit the Salesforce URL, the base URL. and then they will send the request you will authorize it if you are sending the request and you have to use name credential and inside the name credentials you have to provide the endpoint of that third third party system moving forward um uh yes how to do real time integration in salesforce so if you want to do the real time integration we can use platform events and we can use cdc change data capture as well so this is one of the i mean the way we do the real time integration in salesforce um external object can also be considered as a real time integration but again it's, it's not like a integration it's like you're pulling the tableau data okay tell me some governance limit of salesforce integration now interviewer is asking you tell me some governance limit of salesforce integration have you ever do you know what are the governance limit so one limit i already discussed is 100 call out we can make in per transaction second is daily api call is 1 lakh plus there is a calculation based on the license you have number of license multiply by 1000 is generally like 1 lakh 1 lakh 20000 you call outs you can do in single day if you wanted to increase that limit you have to add the license but in single transaction you can only make 100 call outs just remember that a uh, uh, next question can we do the call outs in trigger or or can we call call out method from trigger can so we know the apex trigger or lightning flow trigger should can we do the call out so it's not recommendable you cannot perform the call out directly from the salesos trigger but you can trigger a asynchronous call out so means if there is a trigger and you are in, in, in the single transaction right i mean inside the trigger you are doing some operation and then you are doing the you are calling making call out then it will fail it will give you uncommitted uh, work pending error so instead of making the call on a single transaction you should use future method how to write test class for rest and soap so okay you know how to write down uh, how, you know how to make a call out you know you have to store the endpoint inside the name credentials you know you have to authorize uh, the third party application you have to do so many things you have to create the request right now everything is working fine but now the question here is interview is asking okay tell me how you can write down the test class so for that what we do we create a mock response and in order to create the mock response we create a class with a uh, interface call http call mock call out mock http call out mock we create a class we create a fake response and then we call that class to successfully you know um, uh, cover the lines 75% line of your class so simple and says we create the mock response using the http call out mock interface and then uh, that will produce a fake response and that help us out to cover the lines moving forward uh, let me move this okay in case of failure of call out how to debug that uh, so like if let's suppose that you making a call out you're getting a bad request 404400 then how you can debug your call out the first one is a response in debug logs um, so if you have handled the error of your integration and if if you are storing your debug log somewhere then what first first way of debugging is you have to go to the debug log and see what response what status code you are getting is a 404004 is there any other specific error server down third party system is server is down debug log check yeah you are doing it try and catch put the try and catch and check client id and authentication whether the client id authentication is correct or not or is is it like it's expired or you have to rotate it because in some of the companies have the policies like in every one year you have to rotate the credential so you have to ask the third party system whether whatever the edit client id and client secret you are using is correct or not question number 14 lightning page there is a button when i click i need to call web service and then make a call out to external system returning response to me and i'm putting that response in a data table and later on the data increases an error of time out time out error how to resolve 
So it's showing that there's a lightning page and on the lightning page, there's a button. When I'm clicking that button, there's a call out to the web service and we are getting some response and that response is coming. But uh, when, it, when it's coming the time of rendering, it's showing the error called timeout, timeout error. How we can resolve timeout error in a call out. So basically in web service call out, when we do the integration, we have a method called set timeout. So you can set the timeout. If, if time, set timeout is less, then you will get the error. It will just timeout will pass. So in order to increase that time period, you can increase it up to 120 second. Okay, so maybe it can resolve your problem of timeout. Hmm. What is the next question? Difference between authentication and authorization. This is really my favorite question. So in, in interview questions, people say, okay, you're talking about authorization, authentication. What is the main difference between authorization and authentication? So authentication is that when at the starting, when you are hitting the end point and you're going with the consumer key, consumer secret, a third party system will identify it. It's identifying that, yeah, this is a, this is a valid person who is requesting for. Authorization is once you validate that, once you validate this, this is a right platform who is sending the request, you are giving the access of the data, which is called authorization. Authentication is you're just identifying these are correct user. Authorization means oh, you are authorizing, you are authorizing them to access the data from our server. Okay, next question. How to manage access token and refresh token? So yeah, I think I have mentioned the whole theory, but the hack is that access token is that when we hit with the consumer key and consumer secret with the third party system they provide us the access token and then again we hit the resource server with access token and then we get the data so access token is basically uh, is a kind of is a key of getting the data right access token you're getting the access of the server but the access token can expire all right so in order to it's like they have some time of the access token so if you wanted to refresh that if you want to increase the time of that access token we are have to again send a request which is called refresh token request so you have to refresh that token again so that's that's the different access token is the key and refresh token is when you are increasing the time of that access token um one second <clears throat> yeah Next question, what are the best practices of Salesforce integration? So some of the best practices are like, you have to choose the right type of integration method. I discussed that, what are the different, uh, um, you know, uh, what are the different uh, integration processes? What are the different formatted that we can choose? So I already discussed in one of the video, my last video, you can go and check that. So you first best practices, you have to choose the right integration method. If it's a real time integration, you have to do, you have to choose a platform event. If you're doing the batch integration, then you have to choose some like a bulk API or something like that. If if your, your company integration process is very complex, you have to choose middleware. If you are you're just doing a simple REST API integration, just do the REST, REST API integration. You have to decide what kind of integration method you're using. Um, second best practice is you're making the call out, but sometimes call out get failed. So you have to handle the error, right? If there's some error, you have to get the error. You have to store somewhere in the object record, or you can create your custom error object where you can store all the response, failed response, and if, if possible, Try to implement retry, retry process as well. Okay. Um, uh, document the integration design process of easy maintenance. Make sure error with the governmental limit of the Salesforce. So you have to also make sure that like you're not hitting 101 uh, call out error. Use the name credentials to store the uh, endpoint. The, one of the best practices you don't have to hard code the URL. You don't have to hard code the secret in your Apex class. Instead of that, store that in the name credential. Then refer the name credential inside your class. Uh, document the integration design and process of easy maintenance. Yeah, I, also one of, there's another thing here. You have to choose an integration uh, pattern, which is easy to maintain. I can give you one example. If you wanted to connect AWS and Salesforce uh, through the platform events, you can use PubSub API, you can use Event Relay and some other mechanism. PubSub API is very hard to maintain, but if you're choosing Event Relay or some connector, then it's easy to maintain. So you have to choose your solution wisely so, so that it's very easy to maintain. I want to render the external web page application on Salesforce. How to achieve that? Now, there is a third party website. Okay. That website you wanted to host within Salesforce. This is not an integration, but you wanted to render a third party application within the Salesforce. Let's suppose that the box, you know, box is a software which is stores so many documents. I wanted to render the box document. I have to send a request to the box and box application or box document or particular document I want to render within the sales. So how can render for that? You have to use iframe or let's suppose that a Facebook website, you wanted to show that Facebook page is within the sales source. How you can do that? You have to use the iframe. Uh, you, uh, I will post a video or a detailed video iframe, but if you wanted to learn something, you can go to the Google and YouTube and watch some videos. 
Okay, next for question, explain single sign-on. I uploaded one video on single sign-on in my YouTube channel where I'm using Google account to sign, you know, to log in the Salesforce Institute of using, using username and password. I'm just clicking single sign-on and it's taking my Google Gmail, Gmail email and password and then letting me into the Salesforce. Um, single sign-on is basically a process where you're using just one password authentication method to access multiple applications. Okay, next question, what is the change data capture? Seems like platform event. Change data capture is kind of similar, but I think is that it only get fire or it only pass information when a record status is changing. If if let's suppose that, that there's some change on a record, then your CDS, CDC, a change data capture will fire and will pass the information to the external system. It's also the real time. Now I have discussed 20 questions, okay? Um, and if you wanted to learn all the questions, what you can go, go you can go to my TopMed account and you can go and download it here because I cannot discuss all the 100 questions and you will get a, this kind of uh, PDF, okay? This kind of PDF which have around which have around 100 questions, okay? And these are really most frequently asked questions. If you have just practiced this, then it will be enough for you. And this is just for $10. It's showing $20, but if you go get this and if you uncheck, if you just uncheck this, get instant answer, you have to just pay $10, okay? So I hope this will help you out uh, to you guys. Uh, um, uh, stay tuned and I will come up, come with a new video and please like and subscribe this channel. Um, thank you.